In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this zoom through effect inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So as you can see, we're inside of Adobe After Effects and I've got three videos on my timeline and they're just static shots of me holding up an iPad with a green screen on the screen. And as you can see, three different variations. So one, two, three. Now, when you're filming your own shots, you can do this with green card, or you can put this on an iPad and have the screen filled with a green color. Or alternatively, you could do this on a phone. It's completely up to you, but you want to make sure that you've got a device which is green. And if you can, if you could put these tracking markers on, that would help things as well. Now, you don't need this for this specific effect, but if there was any specific tracking that you wanted to do, then it's always best to have these tracking points because that really does help things out. So make sure you've got three clips of you holding up something green like this. And then basically the camera is going to fly through each one of these green areas. So this will be our first clip. We'll zoom through to here, then we'll zoom through to there. But before we do anything, we need to key out the green. So I'm just going to go to this bottom layer. We'll go into effects and presets and search for key light. Key light 1.2. We'll drop that onto that bottom footage. And then we'll go to the screen color and we'll select that green. And as you can see, that should have got rid of that. If you go into view and changes from final result to status, you can actually see what your progress is. So black is removed, white is kept, and then gray is kind of in between. It's a bit of an ugly middle ground. So we want to adjust the screen gain and the screen balance so that we get more of a black and white contrast. So this looks pretty good. You can also go into screen mat if that's not quite perfect and just adjust the clip black and clip white and that should get you to where you need to go. So if we go back to final result, you should see that background should have disappeared. So now you just want to copy that key light effect onto your other two layers as well. So I'm just going to copy key light. Then we'll go onto the layer above and we'll paste that in and feel free to adjust this. So I'm just going to turn key light off and I'm just going to take this color green. And as you can see, that is looking perfect. Of course, feel free to adjust your screen gain and screen balance if yours isn't perfect. Then I'm just going to go into layer three, paste that in. And again, I think I need to change the color because it's a slightly different hue. There you go. That's looking perfect. If we go into status, you can see that's looking brilliant. So essentially, we're going to fly through this layer to get to this layer to get to this layer. Now, you could manually do this and animate each individual layer. So you could go into transform and you can animate the scale on each layer like this. Or alternatively, if you want them all to feel uniform, you could actually parent them to a null object. And that's the option I'm going to go for. So I'm just going to reset this layer back to 100. And then I'm just going to create a brand new null object. So we'll go layer new null object. Then we'll parent all of those to that null object. We'll go into the null, transform, and we'll create a brand new keyframe on position, scale, and rotation. Now we'll just scroll through to around the five or six second mark, so where we want this to finish, and we'll just turn off the top two layers and we'll get through to here. So this is where we want to finish. However, I'm gonna do like a really cool rotation around. As you can see, the second layer is sideways, so I'm just gonna do a spin around. So in order to do that, I'm just going to rotate this layer around. So I'm going to press R to load rotation and we'll go negative 180. Then we'll go to the layer above and we'll go for rotation again and we'll go negative 90 this time. There you go. And then the layer above should be the normal orientation. So we're going to zoom around until we get to this. So now with those layers rotated, we can actually go into the null object and we can rotate this back around the correct way. So we'll go plus 180. So as you can see, that's just going to zoom around over time. Now, in order to create the zoom effect, we need to increase the scale. So I'm just going to increase the scale all the way up to around 400% at the end. And then I'm just going to change the scale of this bottom layer so that it now fits the screen. So we'll go scale and we'll scale this down. So that's around 25. Then we'll go to the layer above. And as you can see, that's starting to look cool. However, it's still a little bit too big. So I'm just going to decrease the scale of this layer so that this now fits. And then I'll move this back into the middle. 
and then we'll go to the layer on top and there you go the scale should be perfect so as you can see we're now getting this really cool effect just before we carry on with this video i'm going to take a quick break to talk about my skillshare courses if you're enjoying these youtube videos but you would prefer more long form content then my skillshare courses are perfect for you i have a two hour plus course all about Adobe After Effects and it teaches you everything you need to know to get started and to get familiar with the interface and how After Effects works. So if you're interested and you want to learn more, then please feel free to check the link in the description below. Now back to the video. So we've done the hard work with the null object. Now we just need to go in and we just need to clean this up a little bit. So we're going to go onto this top layer. We'll go scale and position the keyframe. And we'll go roughly around here, so around the two or three second mark. And I'm just going to increase the scale so that we zoom through that tablet quicker. And then feel free to move the position around so that we now actually fit in that box. There we go. So let's play this back. Now that looks really cool, but the problem is that was just a little bit too fast at the beginning. So I'm just going to create a new keyframe roughly a quarter of the way through on scale and position. And then I'll move those to halfway through. So it's just taking a little bit longer over that first section. Then we're just going to do the same thing with this second layer. There you go. So as we've come through this iPad, we just want to go to the second layer. We'll go scale and position. So brand new keyframe position scale. Then we'll go roughly to about the four second mark. And we're just going to increase the scale on this layer. And then we'll pull the position up so we basically want this to be in the middle of the screen so we're going through this iPad again there we go so let's play this back from the beginning that looks really good although at the moment there's a little bit of a acceleration here so I'm just going to pull these keyframes back a little bit I'm going to pull them back even more There you go. But again, this was too quick at the beginning. So I'm just going to take these keyframes at about a quarter of the way through. And then I'll just nudge those over to halfway. So we're taking a little bit longer at that first bit. There we go. And now we're into this layer. So at the moment, this layer is too small. We need this to fill the screen a little bit more. So we'll go onto that bottom layer again. So drop down, transform. And we'll go to the end of the action and create a brand new keyframe on position, scale and rotation. Then we'll go back to when we're in the iPad, so around here. And we're just going to increase that scale. So we'll increase it to around 50%. And that makes all the difference. So as you can see, we've got this really cool effect now happening. Although at this current moment in time, we can see the edges of the video. So if I toggle the transparency grid on, you can see we've got the background appearing at all different points throughout this effect. So in order to get rid of that, we just want to go into effects and presets. We're going to search for motion tile. There you go. That should be under stylized. So stylized motion tile, drop this onto that bottom layer. Then we're going to change the output width to 300, the output height to 300 and we will select mirror edges. And as you can see, that has basically filled in those edges with a mirror copy of what's happening. Now you can definitely tell that it is a mirror here, but in the movement and with motion blur applied, that should actually smooth out a little bit. So I'm just gonna copy that motion tile effect and paste that onto the other two layers. So we'll go Command C, then we'll go onto layer above and we'll go Command V. There we go. And then we'll go onto the layer above that one and we'll go Command V again. Now, this top layer doesn't actually need motion tile, so we'll just keep that off for now. So there you go. You can see that is really starting to look awesome. So all I would recommend doing now at this point is just activating your motion blur because we've got that nice zoom through with that rotation. We can actually activate the motion blur and that motion blur might help to hide some of this mirror edges. And there you go. That looks really awesome. Now, if you wanted to delay this movement at the beginning, then you could just push everything across in time. So we'll push that back to the one second mark. We'll go to that top layer and we'll drag this back over to the left. So you see, we're going to hold on to that for a moment and then we'll start the zoom in. And if you wanted to as well, you could actually fade in the layer below. So it looks like the iPad's turned on and then we zoom through. So in order to do that, we'll just 
stretch the previous layer across like this. Then we'll press T on the keyboard to load opacity and pull that down to zero. Brand new keyframe on the stopwatch icon. Move over, increase that to 100 so that we get this nice fade in. And now you can see that fades on and we start the zoom. Of course though, you can see we've got the layer below there. So if you just stretch this across, then you can fade this one in as well. So there you go, we're actually zooming into that blank screen and then it turns on and we zoom through into that layer. You could even delay that even more if you wanted to. Now, as you can see, we're getting a little bit of mesh just in the middle of this second layer. So this one here. And I think that is a little bit of reflection on the screen. So to get rid of that, all you would need to do is just go into your pen tool, mask around that small section there. And then we go into that mask and we just select inverted and that's got rid of that. Now, as you can see, I haven't actually animated this mask to follow that movement, but the mask is following the movement. That's because we haven't actually changed the properties of the layer or the mask or anything. Nothing has moved in the scene. It's a static shot. It's just all the movement is coming from the null object and the scale and the rotation. So you wouldn't actually need to track through the scene and then remove that. So that mask is just going to stay perfectly in position where it needs to sit and it's going to get rid of that nice reflection. But there you go. That is how you get this really awesome dynamic camera zoom through effect inside of Adobe After Effects. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.